All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here with your host, Richard Food from richardfood.com. And today, guys, I have a special guest on the ball on the show here. He excites me because he's just written a book recently called, you know, Big Changes, sorry, Small Changes, Big, Big Results. And that excites me because we're always here talking about the inches over the mile. And so to have someone in here who's going to share more about that and how that's worked for his life and how he can apply to your life is so huge because so often we put off the important stuff so that we can actually do what's urgent, what's on fire, what needs to be put out right now. But if we just focus, even if it's a little small step today, do what's interesting and what's most important to us in our lives, how much more different could it be? So please guys, welcome with me onto the show, Scotty Studer. Scotty, God, thanks for having you on. Man, it's great to be here, Rich. I really appreciate the opportunity. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to have you in here, man, to share more about your book and I guess the ideas that you bring through with your book. So, Scotty, man, for the people who haven't heard about you or your work, could you share more about how you got started and, and I guess how you help people now? Sure, yeah. So, um, the story with the book is really something that uh, kind of was unexpected, to be honest with you. I, um, over the past several years, probably for the past, I don't know, five to seven years, uh, I've, I've tried to uh, just, I don't know, implement some changes in my life. And like everybody else, whether it was changes to my finances, changes to my health, uh, changes to from my faith's perspective, uh, I'd always try to jump in and do something. And then quite frankly, nine times out of 10, uh, I wouldn't stick with it. Uh, I would fail. Uh, and, and, and I felt like that was an annoying pattern uh, that kept uh, that I kept subscribing to, right? And so uh, here recently, probably over the past couple of years, I've uh, tried to surround myself uh, with some with some folks from a mentor perspective, I guess, that uh, that have really kind of um, done some more things than I have and, and, and really helped me see things in a different light. And it really started with my health and then it kind of trans over, transitioned over into finances and then through the other areas of, of family relationships and faith as well. And those are kind of the four key areas that, that I've grown the most over the past several years. And so um, last year, end of last year, listening to podcasts, which is why I, I love the opportunity to, to talk with folks on podcasts because they've been such a great influence on my life. I was listening to an episode and the, the gentleman was talking to a person about a health drink. And um, at the end of the thing, he just said, now, my audience who, you know, maybe kind of just getting started with their health, what's, what's one simple thing that you could recommend that really anybody could pick up and do? And it, it really have a, a great effect on their life. And the gentleman on the interview said, you know, um, try lemon water. You know, uh, start your day with a glass of water, uh, squeeze a little lemon into it. And, 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 and then he kind of went into the, uh, all of the nutritional value and all of the things that, that really science, if you will, has proved to how lemon water starting your day with a glass of water with lemon can really start you off on the right foot for your day. And that was kind of an epiphany moment for me because I thought that's a really good idea. And I've done that before and I know what he's talking about. I wonder if I could come up with a few more ideas that, you know, maybe I've tried to implement and done uh, that I think would be simple to do, uh, but they have a really lasting effect, if you will. So that was kind of that, I don't know what you call it, light bulb moment, epiphany moment, right? Yep. Um, that really took me from, okay, how can I share this information with other people? And um, that really was the, the, the kind of the turning point for let's sit down. Um, let me see if I can put some of these ideas. And so over the, over the, a couple of weeks after that, I wrote down like 70 different ideas, um, which was kind of cool, right? So it was kind of like a great brainstorming session over a period of a couple of weeks to really sit down. And, it, and then I fleshed, you know, 26 of those ideas out uh, into the book itself. But it's been, a, it's been a fantastic experience and quite frankly, one that I never thought I would do. Uh, so that's, that's been one of the coolest parts. Nice, nice. And I love that you mentioned this guy that it started somewhere in your life. When I say somewhere in one of these aspects of your life, it could be in your health, your finances, your relationships, your mindset, your purpose, right? which is a, a five key areas that we talk about a lot here on this show. And so, you know, the fact that you said it started with health, I want to understand, like, what did you do for your health that proved to you that if I just did some small things that it could actually change my life? And then how can I apply that into other areas of my life? What, how did it start with your health? Yep. So um, back in the summer of 2012, my wife and I celebrated our 15 year anniversary and uh, we decided to go uh, kind of a bucket list thing. And we did a seven day Alaska cruise, um, which was amazing, right? Um, happy nice. to do it. Um, and so it was exciting. And so before you go on a cruise, I don't know if you've ever cruised before, but before you go on a cruise, um, you know, they have some formal nights and stuff like that. So the wife wanted to go shopping. Um, so 
and that's cool. She wanted to get a few things, but I, but I needed a suit because uh, I didn't really have one that I wore regularly. And so as I was going and trying on these suits, Rich, I had to tell you, uh, that was kind of a epiphany moment in a way that I wasn't real happy about, right? Where I had to, if I'm going to be comfortable in this suit, perhaps get a size that I didn't think I was in the waist anymore, if I'm being real, right? And so I bought the suit uh, we went on the cruise. We ate a lot because that's what you do on the cruise, and we had a fantastic time. And when I came back, um, kind of the the moment for me was looking over the pictures. Uh, so on a cruise, you can take like professional, not professionals. You got the guys standing around with the cameras, right? And I was looking at the pictures, and I was like, "Wow, my face close up." You know, um, <laughs> I had no idea um, that you know I felt like I had I'd put on weight like I had, and so that that was kind of that moment of. I need, I need to do something about this. And so I was introduced uh, through a friend from college who uh, really started focusing on his nutrition. So instead of taking the approach of diet um, or, or kind of skimping back, uh, and, and, you know, like, like a lot of weight loss things are all about, uh, where you do it for a time, you lose some weight, and then you, uh, you know, ultimately uh, put on the weight again, right? Because you haven't changed the habits. This was more about nutrition at its core. And so it started me on a really good path. And um, it starts with a foundational drink in the morning that I take. It's, it's, it's a great nutrition drink. And then uh, the system itself really helped you uh, start with that as your foundation. And then it also uh, uh, focuses on um, portion control. But it doesn't say, you know, like uh, only eat this. It's really about bringing a more natural uh, routine to your, to your health. And so I liked that, right? Because I didn't feel like I was having to, um, I don't know, do things in a crazy weird way. I mean, it was almost like going back to the basics, right? Because what I found through me and what I found through some research as I was, I was looking through the book too is that, you know, as you kind of go back to the way it was 100 plus years ago and how folks ate back then, it's amazing what your body can do in regards to, uh, you know, getting in the good stuff. Uh, as long as you're kind of being selective about the bad stuff. So that was kind of my, my tipping point. And from that, I'd lost a total of about 35 pounds, uh, which was, which was fantastic mm. for me. Um, and that was at my least, that was at my, my smallest amount, right? Um, yep. over time, I think my body has kind of settled in quite frankly. So, you know, I fluctuated a little bit, but I feel, I just feel so much better from a health perspective. And that's, that's kind of been one of my really focal points with friends and family over the past few years because of, because of my experience. And that's why I've, I've got uh, four or five ch chapters here in the book that really just talk about several things that, that I learned through that process that are just little tiny steps that can have a tremendous result with your health if you just try to you know, apply them for a period of time and, and see, A, if they work for you, right? If, if, if it's something that's not like drudgery for you because who wants to keep doing something that's, that they're miserable doing, that it's a drudgery, right? So yeah. that's, that's not a cool gig. Um, and I don't think any of these are, uh, but the effect of them collectively has, been, has just been tremendous for me. So that, that was kind of the big tipping point from a health perspective. Wow, man. Huge. And you said from there, it translated over to your finances and then into other areas of your life. And so let's talk through this, man. I mean, like one, when you started bringing those principles that you learned in health over into the other areas of your life, what kind of patterns did you see that actually helped you to apply and most of all stick to all these small little changes that you made, man? Yeah. So I think the key is <clears throat> for me, and, and, I, and I think I'm not abnormal. I think I'm normal in a lot of ways if people are honest with yourselves. I think the key to this is you've got to take a step, not a leap. And that's really, I really focus on right in any of these areas. So for instance, uh, in the area of finance, finance has been something that I've just enjoyed. I've kind of been a nerd um, ever since I graduated college about finances. I'm not in the financial industry. I just kind of enjoy learning about it. Um, so I've exposed myself to different whatever you want to call them, philosophies, principles, um, you know, a lot of these guys have different ideas for uh, what you need to do with your finances. And I kind of took, taken all of that and put together my own, I guess, puzzle, if you will, with the different pieces. And with each of those though, to health through finances, the key there is start small. Uh, so for instance, in the financial realm, you know, one of the things I talk about in the book too is to, uh, to get one easy step to take to get better control of your finances, you feel like everything's out of control, is just to write down your spending. Just write down your spending, right? So commit to a week. 
And, and through all of the stuff I talk about, I don't, I don't talk about even committing to a month or, or two weeks. I just say, give it seven days. And, and in this example, just write down what you're spending um, for the day. Take five minutes at the end of the day and write it down. And after a week, you might be really amazed with how much fill in the blank, you know, you're spending, right? Whether it's the eating out, whether it's the, the coffee in the morning, whether it's the pick your poison, right? Whatever it is that you find fulfillment in um, that, you, that brings you pleasure, it might be really causing some financial strain that you may not have even realized before. So I try to take that principle and apply it to my health, uh, whether I think about it from, a, from that lemon water example I gave. If mm -hmm. folks can just, you know, and then what I suggest is just instead of taking the first drink as coffee, fill up a glass of water, squeeze you a lemon in there, and just try it for seven days. You'll be amazed at how refreshed you feel, how regulated your body becomes from a health perspective. I'm not saying skip the coffee, right? I'm, that's the thing is I'm trying to be reasonable in all of this because that's what mm -hmm. works for me is being reasonable. The idea of going from, from, um, from where we are today to this extreme level of scarcity never worked for me because, because – I couldn't do it, quite frankly, right? So this way I'm stepping into changes uh, and, and things are, I'm giving them a, a reasonable period of time. I'm not committing to an extended period of time. And nine times out of 10, as long as I feel like it's a good fit for me, I'm gonna keep doing it. Mm, I gotcha, I gotcha. And what about this? What happens if there's, and you know, for me, I think about it and I'm like, hmm, you know, I, one of the things that gives me a lot of pleasure, Scotty, is like eating fried chicken, you know? And, right. like, <laughs> you, know, and I, you know, you say you have to find the things that are pleasurable and you just yeah. get it used to it. And so what if you have those kind of pleasures and it's just, you know, it's not good, right? You know, right. Not, I mean, it tastes awesome. It's amazing. But like right. you know, having it too often is just not going to add much value to my life aside from just putting more fat around the belly, right? Right. So, how do we break those kind of habits so that we can transform them? So what I, what I found for me personally, right, is um, if I don't have it around me, the temptation is not there. Now, let's be honest. We're all adults here. If we want to indulge and run up to the, you know, the mm -hmm. ice cream shop or Kentucky Fried Chicken or yeah. whatever, right, we're all adults and we're going to and, and we, we have the free will to make that choice. But, but I guess the larger point is what, what helped me is when I was kind of going through this with my wife, I said, listen, ice cream in the house is not going to help me and my goal. You know what I mean? And so if it wasn't here, it wasn't a temptation for me. Um, it was something that I had to kind of proactively to some degree um, um, be, be proactive about, I guess, right? And so that was one way um, where – and the other thing that I tried to do was have that kind of reward uh, idea, right? So, so maybe, maybe I'm trying to eat better and I'm trying to regulate my portions and I'm starting my day with nutrition. And honestly, it was making me not as hungry, quite frankly, too. Um, but, but maybe there comes a time kind of to your point where, you know, you have that date night on the weekend where you order the fried chicken, you know, you have the bowl of ice cream because I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be the guy to, to, to come on here and try to, um, act like it's not there or that I perfected it very easily. But I think there's, there's a whole reasonableness to it. You know what I mean? Um, and if you're really serious and you're really committed and you really want to give this a go, you'll, you'll find a way to keep things uh, reasonable, but also do some proactive things to where it's not, it's not a temptation for you every day. So that's what worked for me. Nice. I like that tip, man. And I think that's a huge one that, you know, it's, and I love that you did this and I think that um, you didn't highlight this enough and I want to bring it out here is that you ask for support as well. You know, so yeah. often when we try and do these small habits, we don't ask for help from the people that matter most to us around us to support mm -hmm. us in that. And, you know, I mean, the fact that you ask your wife, hey, can we not have ice cream around the house? Can we not right. have this around because it's not going to help me? And yeah. she supported you in that. That's huge. And that's huge. And something that I think is one of the other key things that need to happen in order for us to keep these habits alive, you know, to make sure that we keep taking those steps rather than, you know, focusing on those big, like, you know, the cleansers that everyone goes for and then exactly. you know, bang the yo-yo back in to that, that, exactly. that stage, right? Yeah, that's great. No, that's great. And she, and for me personally, that's been a, that's been a great help for me. And I know that, you know, sometimes it is in some people's lives and sometimes it's not, but there's always, I would like to think, uh, that there's always somebody out there that, that can help you be accountable to whatever goal you're trying to reach, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's not the spouse. Maybe, maybe 
it's not the, the best friend, um, but, but maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's your, your, uh, your parent or something, an aunt. I, I don't know, right? But somebody who can help keep you accountable because accountability, I think, is, is really huge a lot of times. Uh, depending on the personality of someone as to um, how well they succeed is having knowing that you're gonna have to make that phone call at the end of the day or or every week or whatever the case may be right or or meet somebody up uh, and, and talk about it at work I think accountability is huge it goes right along with the with the, with the whole idea of having somebody there to support you nice nice and who are you accountable to man who is your accountability partner in your yep. journey most of the time it was my wife. Uh, she was great in that regard, right? She, she, she would help me uh, in some of the things that uh, the, the food that we would prepare and those kinds of things. Um, but she didn't do it in such a way that it was, you know, um, nagging or, you know, you shouldn't be doing that, waving a finger at me kind of stuff. I mean, it, it was a way to be supportive, but yet understanding as well. And mm-hmm. so uh, she's always been a great partner in that regard. Yeah, yeah. And talk us through that example. Like if, if we're getting, if you're getting asked to support your friend to you, your partner or whatever, how mm. should we support them in a way that doesn't put them down or make them feel more horrible when they make that bad decision? What are you, what are your tips, man? What I found is that um, I think it starts by having an honest conversation with whomever that person is going to be. So, uh, for instance, um, maybe maybe you are the type of person that needs the brutal honesty, right? Maybe that is is the type of uh, if you want to call it coaching or support or whatever that, that you need, it's that brutal honesty. And I've had to have that in my time in, 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 in my life before. I remember when I was writing, writing this book, I, I actually uh, kind of joined a program, if you will, that helped me get through this publishing process because I'd never done it before. And part of the program included some coaching sessions. And so when they said, what kind of personality are you? Like what's going to be most impactful for you so we can align you with, with the right person. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I said is, I can procrastinate at times and I can say I'm, you know, going to do something and then put it off, put it off. And I may or may not ever get it done. So I need kind of a hard driver to be honest with me and kind of ask those tough questions and make me answer them honestly so that I'm not, you know, given, given excuses all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. But there may be other people who just need that, that ear to listen to, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, They they may, they may not want and may turn them off to, to have that person as kind of that hard driver. And so I use those two examples because I think the best support or accountability person is someone that is going to tailor their help to you based on what you're asking them to do, right? Mm -hmm. Not just assumptions, um, but really having that honest conversation at the beginning and say, okay, I'm happy to help you how best is it for you to receive the feedback that I'm going to give you? Do you want me to be brutally honest with you? Do you want me to kind of just encourage you, encourage you, encourage you? Uh, you know, what, whatever it is, right? But, but I think it really starts there because then everybody's level setting and, you know, there's no surprises as far as like uh, feelings getting hurt or anything like that because it's, it's an agreed upon kind of thing. Anyway, that, that, that seems to work best for me is to kind of predetermine that. Mm, great. It makes me think about how I need to step in here and like probably have a discussion with like my girlfriend is like, Hey, how do you want me to support you in the best way? Cause I think we try and support them in the way that we think we need to be supported. And so yeah. you point out that it's important to, to sit down and have that expectation talk. It's like, okay, let's plan this out. If this happens where you fall off the wagon and this happens, well, how do you want me to, to play? Right? What yeah. do you want me to be? And I think that's, yeah, exactly. Because we, we all bring our tunnel vision. We all bring our frame of mind to every relationship, right? And so uh, what, what, what I think someone needs, because that's what I would want to receive or how I would want to receive that feedback may be completely turned off to them. Mm-hmm. So, and, and, and let's be honest, right? So, so if someone comes to me and says, I'd like to have you help me with this accountability thing and you kind of talk through that and, and maybe the reality is, you know what, I don't, I don't know if I can deliver the feedback in the way that you really need it to. So I may not be the best person for you for this, whatever it is, specific thing that you're trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's Mm -hmm. good too, because better to get that out at the front end of things than, you know, a week, two weeks in, and it just kind of blows up into an ugly mess because feelings are hurt and those kinds of things. Right. So that kind of open and honesty on the front end, I think is very valuable. Awesome, man. Awesome. Scotty, man, I got to start wrapping up this show, man. It's been fun chatting to you about this. Yeah. As we wrap up the show, we're going to go into our quick fire question rounds. Okay, great. We're going to start off with my favorite one, which is the signature question, the time travel moment, we call it here. And that's, you know, Scotty, if you could go back to any moment in your life 
and talk to little Scotty and give him a piece of advice that you know today, what would you go back to and what would you tell him? Yeah. Um, probably my, my biggest thing would be I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person of faith and I've always tried to focus on my faith and, and kind of that epiphany for me is to really, I like the phrase, let go and let God, right? Because sometimes in life, I, 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 I can't figure stuff out and, and I'm a little hard headed at times like that. And so if I could, if I could go smack 10 year, uh, you know, 10 year ago, Scotty in the head and say, listen, you got to let some of this stuff go, trust that it's going to work out, that it may not be completely in your control. Uh, and there's, there's, there's something else going on here. So that, that would kind of be that, you know, a little bit of a wake up moment for me to tell him to let go and let God. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Next question I have for you here, Scotty, is like, I'm sure you've done a lot of research. I'm sure you read a lot of books in regards to making changes and sticking with your habits. I mean, if there was one book, aside from the one you've got already, man, right, what is the one book that you'd recommend is a must read for anyone who wants to make a huge change in their life? Probably. So it's, it's, it's a great question. Over the past two years, I've kind of proactively reached out to some friends and every month, one of the guys in this group is picking a book. And the only requirement I have is that it be kind of a, 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 a not, not even necessarily a self-help book. I just say a, a nonfiction book. Most of them are uh, books that we can kind of uh, uh, read and improve on, right? And the one that's really been impactful to me is a classic. And it's going to be funny when I say this, but it's how to win friends and influence people. You know, when you think of books that have been around and have stood the test of time, they do that for a reason. And I had never read that book until we read it earlier in the year. And I mentioned it in the book, uh, in, in my Small Changes book, because uh, it was so instrumental to me because it's, it's about how to be a good person and how to relate well to others, and how to focus in on what their needs are and not your needs, right? Because if you do that, if you can master those skills, not in a fakey way, but in a genuine concern for other people, then you are going to be the type of person that other people just want to be around because you, you approach life with an attitude of service to others, uh, not about, you know, what I can get out of that. So it was written in well, I'm going to mess up the date, 1930-something, right? It was written a long yeah. time ago yeah, yeah, yeah. with the principles laid out by Dale Carnegie so many years ago. I mean, they, they stood the test of time. So that would definitely be the one kind of top of my list. Awesome, man. Awesome. We'll add that to the show notes. And it's one of my favorite books too. And I love that you pointed out what it really is about, is just understanding someone else and what they need at that yep. point. Right? Awesome. Yep. Next question I have for you, Scotty, is like, what's it look like if – you're really truly on the right path right and when i talk about this i mean how do you keep those habits in place like how often should someone actually have to review the habits that they're, they're applying in their life like how often do you review what you're doing is like is this just because I, I imagine this right i imagine if i'm doing these habits i'm always reviewing saying is this the best thing in in, in my life right now is this the most optimized thing that i need to be doing yeah. in my life I mean, how do you, how often should someone review what they're doing in their life? And then, you know, if they need to make the changes that need to make changes too. Yeah. And that's a great question. And, and I think, I think that's going to vary from person to person. Um, for me, I kind of, um, I can tell when I'm getting off track, quite frankly. Um, and, and sometimes for me, it's that, it's that listening to the podcast. So what I'm always trying to not always. Again, this I, I kind of go back and forth, but my goal is to surround myself with 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 wisdom, right? Um, in different ways, whether it's reading books, whether it's listening to podcasts, and some of the kind of um, big helps in my life have been that. Uh, that bit of advice that you listen to on the podcast is like, I've never really thought about it that way. That's a great thing that I want to try. Or, wow, that just really brought to light to me something that I've kind of been ignoring or, again, procrastinating against from a habit perspective. I really need to be real with myself and say, you know what, it's not working the way that I've, quote unquote, always done it. Uh, I got to make a tweak. I got to make a change. I got to, you know, again, tweak it a little bit so that it becomes new, but that it doesn't uh, become so overwhelming that it, that it stops you from moving forward. And so uh, for me personally, uh, I'm probably evaluating that maybe every three to four months or something like that. I don't, I don't really, I, I must be honest with you and say that I don't like have it written in my calendar every quarter to kind of do a habit check in with myself, right? <laughs> but I can kind of feel myself getting off the bandwagon at times. And it's at those times that I, you know, 
um, the motivation in me says, listen, I, I, need, I, need to, I need to get cranking on some books again. I need to get focused on listening to some more podcasts, right? Those things that are going to uh, provide wisdom to me and encouragement to me. So that's, that's probably how I approach most of that stuff um, if, if I'm trying to be honest with myself and what I'm doing right and not doing right. Nice, man. Awesome. Awesome. And so, Scotty, man, I want to say thank you for jumping on the show, man, and sharing with us your amazing wisdom here. It's been really helpful, and I've been enjoying this conversation a lot. Awesome. And so, Scotty, for the people who want to connect with you and grab maybe get your book or even, you know, talk more with you, where's the best yeah. place they can head to? Yeah. So, um, my website is just my full name, uh, Scotty Studer, S-C-O-T-T-Y-S-T-U-D-E-R.com, scottystuder.com. Uh, from there, uh, I've got some blog articles that I've posted uh, kind of in line with some of the chapters from the book. Uh, there's a place where folks can pick up either the, uh, the ebook, the audio book, or the physical copy book. I've got all three available on the website. Um, I'm very easily got a contact page on there too. I uh, got a Facebook group if folks are interested in, in kind of, you know, doing that too. I, I try to make myself as available as possible, both from a social media and a web page perspective. Mm-hmm. I love to hear stories and feedback of folks. Uh, it's been one of the most encouraging pieces to putting all of this together. So please feel free to hit me up on that page and uh, shoot me an email. All that contact info is there. Awesome, man. Awesome. And Scotty, you know, before we wrap up here, man, is there anything else you want to add that we couldn't get a chance to chat about on the show today, man? Yeah, the, I guess the, the, the biggest takeaway for me and the biggest thing that I like to share with people, uh, and I've kind of alluded to it earlier, and that is uh, don't, don't stress yourself out with the giant leaps, right? Take it one step at a time. Um, give yourself a period of time to determine whether it's the right fit for you and be okay with making the decision that it's just not working out for me. I need to try something else. Right. Um, that, that to me, if people can really kind of take that advice, whether it's health, whether it's finances, I mean, fill in your blank as to what's important to you. If you can kind of take it with that approach, uh, I, I, I truly believe that you'll have less stress in your life and you'll feel more fulfilled because you'll kind of be taking those steps towards, you know, a better you. And that's, that's really what a lot of us are really trying to do every day. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, Scotty, man, once again, thank you for jumping on the show, man. Absolute pleasure having you here on the show today, brother. My pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Awesome, guys. And this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast today with the man himself, Scotty Studer. He is all about taking the small steps, guys. So I want this. I know Scotty doesn't want this message to be a secret. I don't want this to be a secret. So we got to take the small steps to get it out there so that it gets out there to the bigger masses and to make a real big difference here. And for us to do that, we need you to take a small step. We need you to take that small step to head on over to iTunes and rate the show so that we can actually send this message out there, not just his message, but all the other guests we've had on the show as well. So if you think, you know, you want to take that small step, give us one star. If you want to take that huge leap, give us five stars and, give, and make that leap for us so that we can get it out there. And of course, you can go over to richardfood.com to grab all the resources that Scotty has shared here on the show. And remember, guys, to go out there, go live with love and go smash it. And I'll see you again on the next one.